Hey everyone, this is Nitro. As my alt account, Star Diablo, is updating its lucky wishing machine to level 3, I thought I would do a video about the floating realm feature in Langrissa Mobile because I did a very brief introductory video a while back, so I thought I should talk about it a bit more now, now that I have more information and experience with it. So first of all, in the video description, I have a link to the Langrissa Mobile Master Reference Spreadsheet. That's a spreadsheet from the Wikigrissa team, and it'll have more information about Floating Realm and pretty much everything in the game. But uh, what you need to know is we are actually missing quite a few of the buildings that will be available for the Floating Realm. For example, there's supposed to be a building that will allow you to get additional Clock of Forgiveness uh, recharge attempts. So, and you'll get these attempts even for free to play players. So you don't necessarily have to pay the dollar anymore if you want Clock of Forgiveness. Of course, you have fewer charges, right? Uh, people, players who will buy the Clock of Forgiveness will have more uses of it than players who don't have it. There's other features like a feature that will let you build, or not build, it'll let you create uh, weapons and that kind of gear. And it has a chance of creating SSR gear. So normally it can be a random SR gear, there will be a chance of SSR gear. So a better chance to get SSR equipment. And then there's also items that let you get more stamina. It comes from like a super snack bar and then you have to grow vegetables or something like that. So there's multiple buildings that will appear in the future. That's why there's all these additional slots that are not used at this time. So you, know, you can look up some of those information on that spreadsheet. So other than that though, what I really wanted to mention is that you do not need to max out your income and optimize it to succeed here. For example, what you really need to focus on is efficient use of mana ore and good use of the lemon knight because that is the resource you'll use the most. Uh, then limestone is used much more frequently than lumber. Most of this is linked to the mana transfer pools which uses up a crazy amount of the limonite, a good amount of that second material, and then a smaller amount of the lumber. So that's why you can see my income is limonite's max, limestone has more income than lumber as a result. So consequently, I do have the iron smelters at level 14, all four of them. The quarries are at level 13 or 12. Okay. Actually, this one's at level 11. And in the final building, the woodworking ones are at the lowest level counts. So you can see they're at level 11s and 12s. Next, the floating city apartments, you just want to get them to level 10 or 11. Whatever level does not use up mana ore. You don't need that much population to build this locate to build a floating city efficiently. Like this account doesn't have that many heroes because it's an alt account. And yet with just the 57 population, I was able to build this up quite efficiently and have Lucky Wishing Machine upgrading to level three at this time. The next thing is about the storehouses. So storehouses, once they're upgraded to a certain level, I think at level 10 or so, they start using the lemon knights as well as the limestone. So they start using lumber. So that's another reason to focus your resource production into limonite the most, limestone second, and then lumber third. And in order to get the upgrades, the resource requirements of these increase more and more and more. So in order to upgrade efficiently, what you will need is some of the storehouses at level, like I currently have one storehouse at level 14, and the other storehouses are at level 10 then you're going to probably want to build another one to level 14 because level 10 has only 400,000 store storage. Okay. Level 12 goes up to 640,000, but then level 14 doubles the amount to 128,000. So it's much more efficient to go straight to level 14 from level 10 
rather than build all of them to level 12 or whatever. So most likely I'm going to have two level 14 storehouses and then maybe three level 14 storehouses and then finally four level 14 storehouses. And a little bit more about resource production. So there are the three buildings, Nature's Breath, Seeds of Gaia, and Iron World Brotherhood, which increase obviously lumber, limestone, and lemonite respectively. So Iron World Brotherhood, I'm upgrading to level 10 to maximize that lemonite production because it is without doubt my resource cap. The Seeds of Gaia Research, I have it upgraded to level 8 because level 8 is the level you need to unlock all the contracts. So to have all the slots available for you to fill in with people. And then the Nature's Breath, it's at level 7 right now. It needs to be level 9 to unlock those slots. In that sense, it may not necessarily be worth it, but since I do have the resources available right now, that's really the only reason I'm upgrading it because it uses up lumber and limestone, doesn't use any limonite. So I'll probably upgrade this to level nine eventually, but it's definitely a lower priority. That's like, I've done level eight and level 10 on these much earlier than I started upgrading the Nature's Breath. So this is more of an opportunity upgrade than because I need it. And I think that more or less sums it up. Ultimately, your goal is to properly manage how much mana ore you have and only use it on the crucial infrastructure that you need for it. So that's why limited upgrades of these buildings, at least insofar as you can get all the uh, contract slots unlocked, don't upgrade the floating city apartments once they start needing mana. And you these buildings for the resources, you should only upgrade based on the usage of it because limonite is very, very heavily used. Limestone and lumber, not as much. Finally, for the mana pools, so mana pool level nine is where it starts needing mana to upgrade the mana pool itself. And it's annoying because it only increases production by one per hour. So in other words, if it needs 26,000 mana, you're looking at 26,000, divided by 60, okay. that gives you 433 hours roughly to make the mana back. So if you divide that by 24, it's going to take roughly 18 days before it pays itself off in mana costs and you start making a profit in the mana. So in that sense, do you really want to upgrade it past level nine? I mean, in the long term you do. In the short term, it's probably better to just leave it at level nine and not have to wait 18 days and instead use the mana to upgrade your other buildings appropriately because otherwise you have a long wait before it pays itself off so yeah basically optimization of mana income and spending it on the crucial infrastructure is the goal of all of this and yeah that's all i want to say in this video so thanks for watching everyone i hope you found this useful and on that note, Nitro out.